days that we're flying out, uh, we're not meeting at the plane. We're just going to try to get them, just get in the gym, get, get some shots, get some things that we want to work on. We worked on it, put a few things in, in case we have to go to uh, tomorrow night in, in Brooklyn. Hi. Let me ask you about uh, kind of like preserving um, these guys to get ready for, you know, the regular season with this truncated like training camp. Is there conversations that you and the medical staff are having that's maybe different than a normal year about, you know, a player's load as opposed to, you know, when can you ramp them up because it's such a short amount of time? Um, definitely. We have, I have conversations uh, every day with uh, Mark, our, our scientists, um, Michael, our PT, and, and Danny, our doctor, we're all always talking about our guys and how we can get them ready for that first game on the in Philly, the 20, 23rd. So it's um, it's all part of it. You know, we've had a you know the, the training camps, not really is different from years past from days from a training camp, but the lead up is totally different. And that's always a big part of training camp. Um, but I think our guys came in in pretty good shape. Uh, but it's definitely, we, we, we have conversations all the time and you know, we want everybody to get their best shot of being healthy from the start and throughout the year. Chase. Hey Scott. Um, Robin Lopez uh, shows up really well in box out numbers. Um, seems like he is one of the better players, maybe at boxing out others in the NBA. Um, what makes him so good at that? And in general, what is kind of the key to a, a good box out at the NBA level? Well, he has the, he has the physicality, he has the size. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a big body that it's not easy to get around. And he understands the game from a, from that position very well. He's been, has a lot of experience. He has a defensive mindset. And so I mean, even today, he stopped one of the drills and he said, hey, we got we to hit somebody before you go get the ball, which was great. And it's something that we talk about and something that it's important. If we want to be a good rebounding team, we can't just hope that the ball falls into our, you know, our hands. We got to go hit, get physical, and then, and then go chase the ball down. I think he does a good job of, of keeping his man from getting it, and it opens up um, a lot of a lot of opportunities for our quicker players to get in there and get those rebounds. As you will see with Russell and and Brad, our guards, they should you know get 12 to 15 rebounds any any given night. And uh, with um, Denny of the, uh, what do you think is kind of. Uh, the expectation for him offensively early on. What do you, what would you like to kind of get him going with against Brooklyn? Yeah, I, I want you know with everybody is being efficient, running your routes with uh, proper timing and speed, and taking good shots. I think he's a good enough shooter. He's going to make his fair share, and I think the work that he puts in and the mechanics that he already has, he's going to continue to get better in that. In, the, in that area, but taking good shots, um, making the right plays to me is more important than making them right now. Obviously he wants to, we want, want to have him make shots, but we want him to take good shots and pick up things pretty quick. He's a good, he's a, he has a good feel for the game. And I'm sure it's because of all the experience that he's done playing overseas with you know, grown men at a, at a young age. So I think that, that has ha actually helped um, but he's made shots. He's made shots during the first, you know, eight days, nine days of training camp. So that's good to see. But he's also made the right, the right plays too. You know, he doesn't over dribble. Uh, but it's different. You know, the first game is going to be different from the, from training camp. And then the first regular season game is different from the, from the playoff game. So he's going to experience, you know, different levels of intensity as the season goes on. Ava? He's got kind of um, going off of that question with obviously not that much time gone in training camp to absorb things. What are you going to be looking for tomorrow other than um, guys playing hard? Because I know you're going to say that. Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely want to have good ball movement, things that we've done, you know, the last year or so. We want to continue that. And then um, pick up the defensive reads quickly. Um, 
the guys are going to get good minutes. They're going to get a good. They're going to get some good burn. So they got they got to play them hard and and play them well. Uh, they're going to get good opportunities. Um, there's a great chance that um, Brad and and uh, Russell does not play. Um, DB is not going to play. So there's going to be a lot of minutes that are going to be there. And these are and there's a great chance that uh, Ish um, will not play either. He has a sore. I think it's a, I think it's a hamstring or abductor, uh, but I think he's, he's any day he'll be back now, but I don't think he will play tomorrow. So there's going to be a lot of good minutes to be had and, and guys are going to get good opportunities. It's a, it's a player's dream to go in there and, and get a lot of minutes. And some guys are going to get a lot of minutes to, to showcase what they can bring to the, our team, whether being a starter or a, a guy coming off the bench or a guy that even that can make our team. And um, we haven't gotten a chance to ask you yet. What's your reaction to the changing the rule that you guys no longer have to wear sport coats on the sideline? Um, you know, I, I love it. it it's it's a. Uh, you love the suit or you love the casual? No, I like the, I, I mean, I kind of like both, but if I had to pick one right now, especially this year, I like the polos or the three quarter zips. It looks good. I think it looked great in, in the bubble. And I know I, I'm not one to get a lot of compliments how I look, but a lot of uh, a lot of people said, man, not only our team, but the rest of the league looked really, we look athletic uh, and it looks the part. Uh, and I think it looks, it's pretty cool. And everybody's wearing, you know, the Nike uh, sponsored, you know, three quarter zips for a pole. I think it looks great. Um, but next year we, we're, you know, probably readdress it again, but I think it's a, it's gonna be a good look, especially with what's going on. It sure makes it a lot easier to travel. Neil. Hey, Coach. Uh, obviously, with the fluidity of the GoGo situation, I'm curious for the staff of the GoGo and you know Ryan specifically. Is he essentially now just another assistant coach for you right now, or how is that all playing out? Yeah, I mean, as of right now, until we know um, what that will look like, he's a valuable member to our to our staff. Mike Williams is the same. And even when they were with the, the GoGo, they were still a valuable members. They're always in communication. Uh, they're talented. I, I, we need them around. And they, they add value to our, to our group. And until we know that situation, they're gonna, they're gonna continue. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna change, um, even we, last year we did it. Uh, we're gonna have some rotations um, with our coaching staff on the road just so we can cut down the number because uh, there is the, the NBA protocol. So some guys are going to stay back and um, they're going to do work from, from home and they're going to stay back if we do have players um, back uh, as we will uh, maybe on, even on this trip. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, any do, are, do you have any thoughts on uh, active rosters being on the active rosters being expanded from thirteen to fifteen? Does that do you feel good about that? Do you feel like that makes a big difference in, with you guys going? Are they, are they announced something? Yeah, the active rosters you're going to be able to have fifteen instead of thirteen guys active. Uh, that's, I've probably been told that, but I was probably thinking about a thousand different things. Um, I think it's great. I think it. I think I hope that it, it stays that way. Um, just gives everybody an opportunity to get in the game um, and everybody's live and and it's it's definitely a lot easier because I will be the first to admit early in my coaching career I would forget at times to, to tell a guy that you're not going to be active tonight and and that player probably did not always bring a suit uh, to the to the gym uh, but I think it just it, may, it makes things uh, much easier and it gives everybody a chance, whether it's in a um, a blowout game, whether you're up or down, uh, you can play guys that probably would not not normally have played. And and just for clarity's sake, Russell, Russell, Brad, Davis, is that just that those guys sitting tomorrow? Is that just like because their conditioning is not there? Is that what what's the actual reason? Um, oops. Um, 
they all practice today. Uh, and DV actually practiced today, but today was really light. Um, he wouldn't have played uh, um, regardless. Uh, with, with Russell and Brad, it's just we want to keep getting them more reps and then more um, game-like practices before we, we throw them in a game. It was quick. Uh, they were two guys that did not play uh, any five-on-five -five prior to this. Uh, and then we slowly ramped it up and um, going into – um, they will probably play the, the next game. And it gives us another, you know, three or four more days to, to get their conditioning. Uh, it's gr good right now, but it's always can be better with a couple more days. But injury-wise, their bodies feel great. They look great. Um, but it was a decision. Collectively, we all made the decision. And I think it's the, it's the right one to make. All right, last question back to Chris Miller. Hey, Scotty, just some clarity. You said no TB. I know you have two of them. Which one is not playing tomorrow? Um, Thomas Bryant, he might. Uh, he got hit uh, yesterday. Um, I think it was the I don't know, right or left hip. Um, felt pretty good today. We held him out of practice today. Uh, he's traveling with us, so don't know if he will play. Uh, Bertans was is definitely out, um, and then Russell and Brad more likely. Robin, and you said uh, you know. said with Ish, it's an abductor ish. or a hamstring. Which one? Yeah, one of one of, is Ish is hamstring or abductor. I don't know. One of the okay. so many things, uh, but I, he's feeling good today. I mean, if it was I mean, if it was a regular season game, I'm sure he'd be right ready to play. But so I guess you and Pack are active tomorrow. Uh, Pat. Pat. <laughs> Thank you. Are <laughs> right, we going to play a zone? I can play. All right. Thanks, Coach. All right, guys. See you. We were part of a team that was number one in the league in rebounding. Uh, the Wizards were 28th in it. So you, you, you probably could speak to this better than most. How do you get a team to go from maybe the bottom of the league to at least, you know, middle of the pack in terms of rebounding? Um, it's really a group effort. I find that uh, it's uh, a bit of how hard you're willing to pursue the ball and um, knowing the angles, knowing what position you should be in. And Scotty talked about you stopped a drill today, I guess, just to talk about you've got to hit somebody before you go get the basketball. The attention to detail, the little things in terms of that aspect of the game, how important is that? I mean, they're, bo they're both equally important. Um, you definitely have to put a body on somebody, but at the same time, you got to pursue the ball. Uh, both equally important. Thanks, Robin. Fred. Hey, Robin. Um, I'm sure that you are uh, aware of at least the concept of these numbers, but last year when you were in Milwaukee, you and your brother and Giannis all had like the best rim protection analytics in the league. And you've always had very good rim protection numbers, but you had the best of your career last year. Is, was that based on mostly your teammates around you? Or was there something that you learned while there that you can take away and apply to other situations to, to you know, really enhance your rim protection? Uh, so, so the same thing I said with rebounding. Um, you said it. It's, I like to give a lot of credit to my teammates. It was definitely a team effort. Um, everybody did a great job of having each other's backs. Um, having that, that, other, that second guy, that third guy pull over in, if a moment was needed. Except for Brooke, I imagine. Of course, he's terrible all around. Thanks, Robin. Mm -hmm. Brianna? Hey, Robin, just wondering, how was your transition coming into D.C.? Um, what are you looking forward to playing these first games? It's been great. Um, first day I got here, I was extremely giddy. Um, driving through the city, it's, it's, it's breathtaking to see all the sites, all the monuments. Um, the museums right now during a pandemic, it's a bit of a, they're a bit of a tease, but at some point I would love to get to check them out. As far as the team, they've been incredibly welcoming incredibly helpful um, to getting me acclimated on the floor, on and off. 
And of course, playing with Russell um, Westbrook, you know, uh, Scott Brooks has said a bunch of times that he's brought, you know, another level of intensity. You being able to practice with the team, um, how have you seen the team all together, you guys, and the pace and the intensity of the practices? Um, yeah, Russ, um, he's contagious. Uh, yeah, well, that's a bit of a dirty word right now. But he's... He's somebody when that energy, when you feel that energy around him, it's palpable. It passes on to you. It spreads to the whole team. He lets his voice be heard and he lets his energy be felt. Chase? Yes, uh, another rebounding question. Um, you last year led the NBA in box outs per 36 minutes. Uh, I'm wondering what kind of what is the the art of the box out? Uh, what's the key to uh, you know to, to 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 I guess that part of the game? Um, I think it's leveraging whatever size you have. Um, if you're against bigger dudes, getting getting low, um, pushing back, uh, smaller guys, getting a solid base, staying high. I mean, I, I, it's hard to describe. You know, I I know it's an extremely desirable. It's an extremely desirable talent from the youngins all the way to the elders. Everybody loves boxing out. It's, some, it's the fa their favorite thing to talk about. It's a, it's a sexy thing, really, when you get to when you get to figure out how to do it. Ava. Hey, Robin. Kind of um, going off of Brianna's questions, but just what are your first impressions of this team um, joining the group and actually being able to get to get on court with these guys? Um, something we hear all the time is how young this roster is. Do they play like a young group of guys too, or, or what's that kind of your first feelings there? Uh, it doesn't necessarily, they don't necessarily belay that to me. Um, I find, like I said, there's a, a great atmosphere around camp, but everybody's been really sharp um, on, de on defensive rotations and where they need to be on offense, moving around um, without the ball. So I don't, I, there, there really hasn't been too much that's indicated that this is an extremely youthful team to me. And then obviously you've got a, a pretty young starter at the, at the five spot. What kind of conversations, if any, have you and, and Thomas Bryant gotten to have yet? You know, TV, I've known TV for a few years. Uh, he's a great guy. He's a, he's a great player. So it's going to be fun working with him uh, to, to, to back up that five spot. Uh, he's, he can play from anywhere on the floor, and he's looked good on the defensive end in practice. How has he changed when you first met him a couple of years ago? Have you have you noticed anything about him? Um, you know, with that experience, he, he's become more aggressive. He's become more assertive, more comfortable with himself on the floor. Thanks, Robin. Ben. Robin, I hope you're doing well. To follow up on Ava's question, are there any teammates that stood out to you or maybe surprised you with something that you might have not known about them on the court before joining the team? Um, good question. Uh, you know, I, I, I love how, how vocal everybody is right now. Um, I think it's really, it's really trickling down the entire roster. Guys aren't afraid to speak up when they see something that needs correcting. Anthony? Hey, Robin. Um, I know last year in Milwaukee you had a pretty set pregame ritual um, do you plan on bringing any WWE um, moves to Washington this year? That'd be telling. I um, mean, that's it's not a very good rule of showmanship. You don't you, you want to show, don't tell, right? So I think people are just going to have to wait and see on that. 